etc., because they had no knowledge of English. The response of the security forces was brutal. Within a few months, the JVP was broken. Their leader was tried and imprisoned. Hundreds were killed. The South simmered with resentment. Political violence had arrived in Sri Lanka. It lasted a few months. Then it fizzled out and most of the leaders were arrested. But it was a real wake-up call for the government. And it even uh, hardened their policy, I think, towards the minorities. She had crushed the JVP. Now Mrs. Bandranayaka needed to placate Sinhalese nationalist opinion. She began by changing the country's name. Ceylon, the name of the colonialists, became Sri Lanka, meaning in Sinhala, resplendent island. A new constitution enshrined Buddhism as the state religion. The Sinhalese language was given even greater prominence. For Tamils, it was the last straw. There began to be a shift in Tamil politics. There was a greater emphasis on the need for devolution. And there is now an advocacy of the use of violence to achieve ends. Now, the effort is to try to mobilize other groups to get solutions. And the first was actually India. The Tamil nationalists sought the support of the Indian government to help them gain their objective. Sri Lanka is separated from India by a narrow waterway. On the other side, in Tamil Nadu, live 50 million Indian Tamils, three times as many as Sri Lanka's whole population. Tamils on both sides share the same language and culture. Tamil Nadu was a natural sanctuary for Sri Lanka's militants. By this time, a bewildering array of Tamil fighting groups had emerged in Sri Lanka. Among them, a group calling itself the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, or LTTE. Their aim was to carve out an independent Tamil state from the north and east of the island. The name they gave to their would-be state was Tamil Elam. Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, or the LTTE was born in 1972. The conditions of oppression against the Tamils intensified at that time. So Mr. Prabhagaran organized the LTTEA as a national liberation movement with an objective of launching an armed struggle against the oppressive state apparatus. But at that particular conjuncture it was a small guerrilla organization. But it had a long history of evolution. The Tamil Tiger's strongholds were in the north and the east. From small beginnings, they grew into a fighting force which would bring the state almost to its knees. But it was an act of violence in Jaffna, the Tamil capital, an attack on the ancient culture of the Tamil people, which was to alienate ordinary Tamils and to bring the militants their first taste of popular support. In 1980, Jaffna Public Library was burnt. So that was a repository of irreplaceable um, books. Tamils are very proud of their ancient culture and literature. The burning of the library was intended to strike at the most potent symbol of their separate identity. We went there to the library to see it was burnt and half burnt uh, pages. The whole building is carpeted with these uh, ashes. As an academic and lover of books, I was furious. I would never forgive the singular government burning that library. 
that previous night the police or the army implemented this curfew. Under the curfew they have burnt it. So it is their 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 work. So so I can't forgive it. In 1983, an act of retaliation. The Tigers killed 13 Sri Lankan soldiers in an ambush, their first big attack. The bodies were brought back to Colombo for a mass funeral. The civil war had begun. There were a lot of people who came to see the funeral and the emotions were running very high. In the evening, after the funerals were over, the mobs were coming out. They started attacking anything and everything they saw, which were Tamil. So this escalated from there. They started attacking Tamil families and, and uh, business establishments. I believe it was 25th of uh, July. And I was coming to office early in the morning, it was about 5.40, 5.45. And we could see even at that time, smoke billowing from parts of the city. And I did speak to others who were working there, they said they saw buildings on fire. Tamil areas of Colombo were set ablaze. There were some sort of organized groups going around. They were coming out and going to the addresses, knocking on the doors and pulling out the Tamils and killing them. And I saw it and it happening. It went on for a few days. There had been plenty of riots before, but this was different, a state-sponsored pogrom. I moved to the state television studios and that was in a residential part of town and very a good residential area. There was looting going on there. I could see police jeeps going by. Nobody did anything. Occasionally you could see army truck. Nothing was happening. Many, many Tamils were killed and many people were homeless. The house I was living got burned down and we lost everything because we were we had Tamil neighbors. Hundreds of Tamils died in the riots. The world was outraged. When asked why the government had allowed it to happen, President Jayawardena had no convincing answer. I think uh, there was a big anti-Tamil feeling among the forces also. And they felt that uh, shooting the Sinhalese who were rioting would be in anti sinhalese and actually in some places we saw them encouraging. Their properties burned, not just in Colombo but in the hill country too. Tamils fled, fearing for their lives. No one felt safe. It was a riot substantially fomented by elements of the government and the president at the time felt too weak to check those elements. One minister in that government uh, was clearly was seen to be standing in the street with a list of uh, uh, names of residents of various buildings. You can tell the net difference between Sinhalese and Tamil names, and directing rioters uh, to destroy the properties of Tamil people and kill people inside those buildings. This form of state violence against the Tamil had a genocidal intent, in the sense that the, that the oppression had a multi-dimensional thrust in which the essential foundations of the Tamil nations were attacked. That is the Tamil language, <coughs> Tamil culture, the education opportunities of the Tamil people, even the territories were forcefully colonized by the uh, Sinhalese people. So it has a multi-dimensional aspect which affected the very foundation of the Tamil nation. Makeshift refugee camps were set up to house the thousands of Tamils who had been driven from their homes. Wealthier Tamils sold up and settled abroad. Less fortunate ones were forced to stay for months in converted schools and temples.